just past 8 a.m. on Tuesday, September 17th. It's Harvest Moon Day. Temperature indoors and outdoors, 63 degrees. T-Rex, jump up against this. He just only jumps up against the slider in Weymouth. Uh, here he tries to uh, go out and find birds and squirrels and such and hopefully doesn't take off on me. The birds are singing. Definitely more humid. Temperature and dew point indoors and outdoors, 63 degrees, actually dew point outdoors. So it's a thicker cloud this morning. I think maybe the party is over. We've been on borrowed time here with this gorgeous day after day after day. Now, I'm not saying there's no hope, but here on Cape Cod, this is a fairly thick cloud and there's smoke mixed with the cloud and there's not wind, there's no wind to mix it out. So when you get an inversion, and the cooler air gets trapped down below. And if there's a moist layer there, it is really tough to burn off the cloud. So that's gonna be a challenge today. I think away from the coast, we're still gonna get plenty of sunshine today. Here's the satellite imagery. You see the thicker cloud right over southeastern New England, totally clear to the north. And then to the south, uh, the remnant of that tropical system from yesterday, actually a hybrid is sitting there still bubbling over eastern North Carolina with more flash flooding today. All right, now as I come over to my brother's yard here and look up, that's thinning. So let's see what we have is a, a layer of stratocumulus near the ground, uh, only uh, from the ground up through about 300 feet. And then above that looks like some broken altocumulus is my speculation. So, all right, the sun is gonna come out on Cape Cod today. As for the moon, though, what a gorgeous night last night. So many beautiful shots. And it wasn't just the moon, either. I think my favorite moon shot actually came from uh, Washington State. I forgot your handle, but Mount Baker in the background. Oh, my goodness. How do you top that? And here in the Northeast, not only did we have the moon, but we had the aurora. And with that clear sky in Rollinsford, New Hampshire, Rob Wright, as always, was right on it. And that means that there was a coronal mass ejection, a solar storm, and the ions in the top of the atmosphere lit up with the aurora last night. The waning days of the Rose of Sharon here, as autumn cannot be stopped. Start with the Boston Five Day Meteo, and it does show the dew point actually coming down a little, the blue line today. And the red line going up back to 80, so close to 80 degrees in Boston today. And this is even with a sea breeze. So it looks like another nice day for most of New England. And then tomorrow, the clouds really thicken up. And we have the temperature and the dew point coming together tomorrow night. And that means saturation. And then look at Thursday, all day rain, according to the Euro. The streak of dry days in a row is going to end at, what, about 27 at Logan Airport? And the Euro now is the most bullish on the rainfall with coming in with 1.8 inches of rain for Boston on Thursday. Well, I think I'll take the under on that, but uh, the rainfall with these systems is really unpredictable. Should we rewind to yesterday afternoon with the satellite imagery showing that only 1,007, 1,006 millibar hybrid storm over North Carolina? Actually, the center of it went into South Carolina, but the heaviest rain was on the north side of this still cold core storm. So you had a dew point in the 70s running into and over the top of some colder air. And much like what happened in Connecticut about four or five weeks ago, just a torrential event occurred. And we had 18 inches of rain on Carolina Beach, just north of Cape Fear, where the forecast was for four to seven inches of rain. So about two and a half, three times the amount of rain, four inches of rain would have been enough for flooding. Instead, it was sort of uh, significant damaging flooding. Now it was near the coast, so it wasn't like running down the mountains, but it just filled uh, this parking lot there, Ocean Ave, I guess. I feel so bad for that Jeep. So they were caught off guard there and it was very localized. Look at the radar. Uh, signature on the amount of rain that fell right there, right on the beach, just south of Wrightsville. Uh, over 20 inches of rain out over the ocean with 18 inches of rain reported there in Carolina Beach. And it's still overachieving in the rainfall department now this morning uh, near Cape Hatteras. And so 
that's the radar this morning. You see that very heavy rain there just kind of sitting there. Flash flood warnings in effect. So when this gets up and starts running into our uh, high pressure system that's in place here, the stakes are fairly high for some pretty heavy rainfall. And if I just, instead of using the millimeters like yesterday, that's because the rest of the world, world uses millimeters. And anytime you take a map not centered on the United States from pivotal, pivotal weather, you're gonna get it in millimeters. So I'm gonna take one here, a very localized map and show the Euro with the rain advancing and being measured in inches now. It's not raining today. It's tomorrow afternoon, clock in the upper right in Zulu. Once you get to about 3Z, it says 3Z Thursday, which is actually about 11 o'clock Wednesday, tomorrow night, rain's coming in. It gets really off and on heavy from the coast of Connecticut to Cape Cod. Yesterday, the heaviest was over Connecticut. Now today, the heaviest is over Cape Cod. And if we stop that about Friday night, that's this first event that's gonna come at us. It shows right over my head, right here. Uh, what was it, three? 0.5, something like that, three inches of rain near Barnstable. So uh, the grass underneath me is going, really, really? Are we gonna get three inches of rain? It's possible. I mean, it's gonna go back and forth. Remember yesterday I talked about the Australian model, the Access G with more than seven inches of rain in Boston? Well, now that same model has 0 0.06. So you gotta add all these up and then divide and use logic. The logic is that we're gonna have some really heavy rain bands. And again, like I've been talking about that real warm, humid front from the south, which has been so far south of us now for more than two weeks. We haven't had a real warm front come through here now in more than two and a half weeks. And that real warm front's gonna come right up to the, just south of New England and stall there. And we're gonna have multiple areas of low pressure sort of spinning around and uh, taking wax at us, and at least southern New England, right through the weekend, really, even though the weekend does look better than uh, the Thursday, Friday. You want to know first about the cloud cover for the moon tonight? All right, here's the HRRR. I hardly ever show this map because it's hard to depict what's going on. Uh, the blue is overcast sky, and it shows in the upper left, there's the clock again. Once you get to zero Z, that's eight o'clock. That's just about when the moon is above the horizon, and it shows overcast for most of New England through the night tonight, but in a lot of cases, that overcast is going to be thin cloudiness, and we should be able to see the moon through the clouds, and hopefully it's thin enough that with the, the thin cloud and the smoke that's in the sky from the western fires, we'll have a really colorful moon in some spots. And I leave that to the professionals. If I were to choose what spots, I would say uh, from the lakes of New Hampshire points north and east into Maine, that's where the drier air is and the clouds should be thinner. I think around here uh, from Boston to Cape Cod, we're probably gonna have the low clouds and the mid clouds and the high clouds coming in off the ocean. So happy that we chased yesterday. T-Rex, what are you sniffing around for? Uh, the National Hurricane Center still monitoring Tropical Depression Gordon. So the G storm remains the only action in town now as far as pure tropics go. And Gordon is expected to hang on and meander and still be on the map in a week as a, perhaps a tropical storm right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So the real action is going to have to do with the high pressure that's already over New England and a new high pressure system backing in here from the north and east over the weekend, butting up against this tropical flow that's trying to come north. And it's going to be a really tough day by day forecast uh, beginning in about 24 hours. So I guess I'll just show the national, the lower 48 with this action of that low pressure coming north and the wind is going to be increasing along the south coast of New England as the rain bands come in late tomorrow, tomorrow night. And then Thursday, we have the rain band supposedly setting up just in eastern Massachusetts and then kind of wobbling to the south and west and kind of decaying. And one low is gonna move east to Nantucket. The other low is gonna fall south from Long Island. And at the same time, new high pressure is gonna be coming in out of eastern Canada. And that's gonna push some more dense, cooler air into New England. At the same time, that warmer, more humid air is gonna try and ride up over the top and that's gonna create uh, overrunning and also low level clouds coming in off the ocean. So although it doesn't look that rainy over the weekend, I'm now pulling T-Rex with my arm away from Macy. I don't know what Rex is barking at. There's Missy on that side and Macy on the other side and I'm just trying to hide in the backyard. I know I'm very noisy, Macy, sorry. 
and so we'll keep that map going um, Sunday into Monday it looks like this new high pressure system is going to cause the wind field to really broaden out now we're talking large scale almost hybrid nor'easter off to the south of New England with rain bands very close and then once we get late in the period it looks like there's actually going to be a warm front from the south coming into New England with heavier rain for most of us next Tuesday into Wednesday and then once you get out to day 10 it looks like we may have a tropical storm maybe Helene in the Gulf of Mexico around day 10 so a lot of people are talking about that how the tropics may come back to life uh, in a couple of weeks but certainly in the heart of hurricane season even though that was devastating in the Carolinas yesterday not named storms but still the energy comes out everyone in Florida is talking about how hot and how wet it's been so even though we're not getting the huge number of named storms it it's, it's the tropical energy and, and the cold from the north that's causing all this really global flooding I got another shot it's still snowing in parts of Austria uh, what's it called on freaks in Ober, Oberturn, Oberturn. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce uh, these names in Austrian, which I cannot do. Actually, it's German. And so anyhow, Austria, devastating floods and historic snow. He says more than a meter of snow there at that resort, right in the middle of Austria, which is right in the middle of Europe. And the floods go on today in Turkey and Poland and so it happens globally. It happened in the Carolinas yesterday, and it's been happening in Europe and in New England. We've been riding this beautiful wave. So it's been kind of a blocking standing wave in the atmosphere, and we've been on the good part of it. And hopefully the sun will come out again today, but then we are in for some gloomy weather. And yesterday, so fun doing the water testing with Charlie down there across the pond. and. This family of swans came right up to us, seven swans. I had seen them fly by. And then there were kingfisher. And then yesterday, a real delight, chasing moon rise with Jeffrey Scott Davis, old friend. We went down to Mayfair Boatyard and just did a time lapse. And T-Rex was sitting on his lap, watching the moon come up. And Kelly's Bay, named after David O'Kelia the first Kelly to come to Cape Cod. And I think we're all ancestors to David O'Kelia. All right, the dogs have stopped barking. Here's the Inmore, a very Bass River Monday yesterday. Talk to you tomorrow. Glories. Out the door. Hey, Lassie. Hi. Want to be on out the door weather and more? You come here. You come here. Uh oh, what was that? It was a fly. Hi. Hi. You good girl. Can you give me a kiss? <laughs> hey, Coco. <laughs> Coco wants to go down the pond and do some testing with us. Gorgeous. Charlie and Coco and the Yarmouth side of Fallen's Pond this morning. You come here. Yeah. You good girl. All right, you gotta stay here, okay? <laughs> We've already had two dogs in. <laughs> Excitable. Wow. The sky and the water are mirroring one another. Look over towards the Arthur Walker Association. We chose not to pull the raft until next week. Autumn is delayed because it won't stop being summer. My name is Wakefield. The sun no longer shines on us in the morning here. Twenty-three Celsius. Did I mention I saw like five, seven swans flying by yesterday in formation? Wow. Have you seen them lately? No. Oh, wait. <laughs> You're so funny. So what kind of noise is that they're making? That's mommy, because she's in charge. Oh, it's a little bigger. And there's daddy. And wow, the kids grow up so quickly nowadays. The 
Do you guys want to be in out the door weather and more? What's for breakfast? Wow. Okay. So I'm not a swanologist, but I'm thinking the white ones are older than the darker ones. Yeah. The darker ones are the younger ones. So we've got three adults and four juvies. Yeah. And they seem to like that green stuff. I like seaweed too. Oh, is that the babies making their own noise? Yeah. Without moving their mouths? Sorry, fellas, we don't have any food. You must think we have food. Hey, we were here first. I don't think that's happy to see me. The kids are just wondering, what is that? That's TK. He does this podcast every day called Out the Door, Weather and More. Can we be in it, Mommy? Can we be in it? So swans mate for life. They form that heart shape when they come together. Thanks for visiting. You really made our day today. We're having a wedding up the hill on Saturday. Can you come over? Entertain us? <laughs> All right, talk to you later. We also have a king... Fisher, kingfisher. And there's the kingfisher with the backdrop of being what we used to call Shorts Beach. Can't remember the real name of it. That's over in Dennis at the town landing, Fallen's Pond right there. That's where the Connells used to live and now the, the Paynes bought the property. And there's Davenport's house, Paynes house. Can't really see the Paynes house, it's in the trees. Oh no, that's it. No, that's not it. It's a huge house up there. And TK's house. You can't see that either behind those trees. Kingfisher. Blue Jay. There are the swans going beneath the kingfisher. Crows and turkeys, T-Rex. Rex, we're going this way. Come on. <laughs> Dude just scored a pair of pliers in the water down there. <laughs> a little bit of a breeze from the southeast. Sometimes that's the fog direction, but this time of year, the water is warmer than most of the rest of the year. So often, even when the dew point comes up, sometimes you can go fog free. So here we are back at Horsefoot Cove, and that is the osprey nest. And word is that the mother osprey left last week, then the father osprey left just like in the last day or two. And now the only ones left are the juvenile osprey because I saw three of them today and they're the last to fly south. So the osprey are departing. It's kind of sad. One season ends, another one begins. Love all the seasons. But I get sad when they end. Where's scallops? The scallops are in here somewhere. This is the first place we saw the osprey in the springtime. Remember that, Rex? The utility company tried to get them not to build a nest up there, but they did anyway, right around the guard. And they even somehow got a traffic cone embedded in there. So the sun goes down over Fallen's Pond, but the moon comes up yeah. over another place. What's the name of that water down there? I think it's called uh, Father's Pond. No, the other one where Uncle Jimmy lives. Oh, that is um, Mayfair. And I think that's Kelly's Bay. Yes, it is. So let's go to Kelly's Bay for the moonrise. Great idea, Tim. So do you mind if T-Rex rides on your lap? <laughs> of course he can, Tim. I love T-Rex. Bayview and Edgemere. Oh, this is the same place I used to hang around when I was a young man. That is right, Tim. That was Mr. Kent's house right there, all the Kents. And your um, 
grandparents right over there. Yeah. Haven't been here in a while. Do you know whose house that is? Oh, that used to be um, Trisha's house, but they are working on it right now. And then uh, your grandparents up that hill? No, that, up hill, that hill is my grandparents' house. Right. Let's see. Okay, so you're going to... Grandpa. That was Warren Eldridge. His mom, I mean his wife, was my nursery school teacher. Your grandmother was my nursery school teacher. I know she was, and it's been like a how long, long time. And that's Kelly's Bay out there. This is Mayfair Boatyard. Yeah. So we're going to try and position ourselves to see the moon come up in a few minutes. They call it the super harvest moon. And this is the water right here. Um, we can go to you my... Know, I think the boatyard would be even better with the boats. Great idea, Tim. I love your ideas. Oh, thank you. Why didn't I think of this earlier? I was almost going to drive to another town, but here we have Kelly's Bay and Mayfair Boatyard, where both you and I have spent most of our lives. That is right, Tim. <laughs> so cool. So we're right down to the wire. I just uh, uploaded a new app. I couldn't decide where to go, and it just dawned on me we should go to Kelly's Bay, and why not for the moonrise, which is in about two seconds. And uh, I got to use my new app to figure out which house the moon is going to come up over. There's always a little bit of a lee. Generally, when the sun goes down over your back, the moon comes up directly in front of you. It's just south of east tonight check out the compass and then we're gonna let it roll. And I'm off by a few degrees. Jeffrey, can you tell me what time it is? So the time is 6.37 right now. Which is interesting because the official moon rise from the officials was 6.18, so it's almost 19 minutes later. Yeah. Whoever wins gets a scratch ticket, and the loser will drink coffee. <laughs> well, I saw the moon first. Yeah, you did. So I get a scratch ticket. Yeah. And what do you get? I'm gonna drink some uh, coffee then. Oh, look, the seagull flying right in front of the moon. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, this is the moon. I have a better idea. I have a better idea. You could not. Yeah, I do. So you can go on the dock right over there and go to that corner and take a picture of the moon. Do it there. And I gotta set up my camera to get the glare too. The reflection. The moon sparkle off of Kelly's Bay. And Saturn's going to appear next to the moon. We won't see it on this, I don't think. And that's what it looks like in my camera right there. I'm yeah, trying to get both I the can moon see it. and yeah. the reflection of the water. Yeah. Oh, I got it. Okay then. <laughs> the moon went out of the frame. I was hoping Saturn would appear. Oh, it was behind the timer. I couldn't see it. We're at 40 minutes. So I think Saturn's going to appear any moment. So can we just try and watch for that? Yeah. Oh, now I've got the light on, and there's the moon, and there's the T-Rex, and there's the Jeffrey. Is everyone having a good night? Yes, we are, Tim. We are having fun <laughs> seeing the moon. This is so cool. Yep, there's no place else on Earth I would rather be. <laughs> I know, right? Mayfair Boatyard, where we all grew up watching the September 16th, almost full harvest moon. They also call it the super moon because it's only 250,000 miles away. And there's a slight eclipse tomorrow night and there'll be the moon turning red and that's why they call it a blood moon so super harvest blood is how this is all working out 
So that's just the reflection, light waves off water waves. <laughs> I was hoping to see Saturn by now, but I guess it's not in the cards. Get Jeffrey home. Very fun. 24 hours until the full harvest moon. Until tomorrow. That's a wrap. Yeah. Well, we're gonna go home and have some dinner now. That's right. Thanks for coming, Jeffrey Scott Davis. No problem, Tim. T-Rex. Thank you. He loves you too. Of course he does. <laughs> Who doesn't? You two really make the video more fun. Because we do. It's just about 7.30. Why T-Rex? <laughs> Why Jeffrey? <laughs> there it is. Mayfair Boatyard. No place else on earth we would rather be. Saturn is right there. But I was not unable to see it. Ethan, whose phone is that? Ethan, do you have Jeffrey's phone? Hmm. Oh, those are some good pictures of the moon tonight, huh? Do you like taking pictures? Do you like the pictures, Ethan? <laughs> wow. Do you like taking pictures? Yes, I do, Tim. <laughs> I love taking pictures. Are you in any competition? Oh, yes, yes, I am on my competition on this photo. Yeah. So it's going to be so beautiful. It is so beautiful. You took that picture? Yes, I did. And are you going to win an award? Yes, I am. Right. 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 We're really excited. We're really excited. Oh, look at Ethan's taking pictures. Oh, Ethan, Do it. Ethan, you like to take pictures too? Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I'm going to put it on welcome. TV.